standing out here on the Edenville Earthen Embankment. You can see the giant dewind trencher behind me. We'll be taking a little bit closer look at that very shortly. And I'll be explaining what is going on here. Let me turn the camera around though. Flip the microphone around so you guys can hear me a little bit better. But I did film a short video on this uh, about a week ago when they were just starting down there by the Edenville Dam. They're waiting for some analytical to come back before they started doing this trenching here. So you can kind of see they've made quite a bit of progress. Actually yesterday they just ended up shortening the boom a little bit. Down there by the dam they were at about 60 feet deep. Now they're about 30 feet deep. So that's just because the glacial till is coming up in elevation. They don't need to go quite as deep. You can see the top of the earthen embankment where they stripped off about two feet, made this wider for the trencher to be able to operate here. This level will be being brought back up. Uh, they'll be putting more clay on the side of the earthen embankment uh, like they did previously as well. Pretty impressive piece of machinery though here. You can see the uh, platform is actually built off an excavator. Uh, I think Dewin kind of is uh, specializing here in SCB cutoff walls. I don't think there's many other people that are actually uh, doing this with the trencher. Let's go ahead, move a little bit closer, and then you guys will be able to see this operation a little bit better. Jumping into some of the drone video here. We're flying towards the east and probably about 50 to 100 feet in altitude. Again, you can see the trencher right here in the center of the screen. And way back there at the top of the screen is the Edenville Dam. You can see some of that riprap that is still in place in front of the dam, keeping some of that sediment from washing down the river and filling uh, that river channel back up that they worked so hard cleaning out a couple years ago. But now focusing on the trencher here in the middle of the screen, you can kind of see some of that uh, SCB. Kind of just looks like a mud clay mixture though, where the trencher is going ahead digging there. Uh, the two hoppers up near the top of the machine, and then the semis at the top right of the screen that are supplying the cement and bentonite. Uh, we'll take a little bit closer look at these later on, but we'll give you the bird's eye view directly above the machine. And you can kind of see some of the aspects that this does look like an excavator platform. It has been heavily modified though. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to actually see any sort of, uh, I mean, there's some similarities of an excavator here, but there are a lot of differences. All right, let's go ahead, jump back into some of the video from the ground now. We're on the other side of where I was just standing over there now. You can see the trencher. Uh, you can see the two trucks down there. They contain the cement and the bentonite. So those are uh, powdery, flowable mixture. They use air to send it up here to the actual trencher. See the operator in there, windshield wipers going. Looks like they have some uh, water going down the windshield so that uh, he's able to continuously monitor the process and see. You see this is the mixture that is going completely down and forming the cutoff wall. So this is actually the SCB soil cement bentonite mixture that is forming this cutoff wall and that cutoff wall is kind of pre creating an impermeable layer that when this lake is refilled water will no longer be able to just kind of seep through this earthen embankment through to eventually this side and weaken it um, it'll actually stop right here at this cutoff wall we'll jump back into some of the drone video here now get a little bit of a closer look at the trencher than I was able to get in person just because you know I'm able to put the drone in a little bit more precarious closer position than I would uh, normally be willing to stand if I was there in person just for uh, safety reasons you can kind of see the operator uh, sitting there watching um, kind of monitoring the process and advancing the trencher when you know he deems necessary and it is a little bit of a slow process, as you can see. Um, the deeper they go, the slower it is. So the shallower they are, a little bit faster that they can move. And this is pretty shallow at this point. Um, I think I say it later on in the video, but 
when they were closer to the Edenville Dam, they were a little bit deeper. And at this time that I went out there and filmed, uh, they were a little bit shallower just because that glacial till, that bedrock is a little bit shallower. Probably the further you get away from the um, original river channel where these dams were built, it probably gets shallower. But of course the dams were probably placed in the original river channel. So that would make sense that that is the deepest part of the bedrock and hard pan. Pretty cool though, seeing the trencher. It just looks like, uh, you know, if you've seen normal everyday smaller trenchers that people use in their backyard, uh, we used one for laying all of our irrigation pipe in at our house. Um, when I put in our sprinkler system, you'll be able to see that video coming up very shortly on my other channel. It's just a larger scale version of that. And I'll show you some of the, um, this trencher that's in the lay down yard a little bit later on in the video. I might actually include a little bit of raw video at the end of this video as well because I did do a lot of filming with the drone. So those of you that are interested in that, make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end of the video. It looks like they have an excavator staged over here on the left hand side that kind of just smooths out the top of that SCB mixture. And again, they will be bringing the dirt that they stripped off the top of the earthen embankment back on so that the um, earthen embankment is restored back to the level that it was. Again, these lake levels will be restored back to the same height, the same elevation that they were previously. Um, and, and they will be armored up a little bit more with clay uh, when these are fully restored. You can see the cement and the bentonite comes up into these hoppers and gets mixed. You can kind of see where those are spinning there. That is metering in how much bentonite and how much cement is actually going down into the cutoff wall. And the one on the left that's spinning a little bit faster is the bentonite. So a little bit more bentonite going in here than the actual cement. And you might be wondering at the end of the day, how do they get this cutoff wall to meet back up with the previous day when it starts hardening? And what they end up doing is just putting in bentonite so that it's not super solid. The next day they can come back in, trench out that bentonite, and meet back up with the SCB portion that is more solid. That's where they can start trenching again to continue and form one solid uh, cutoff wall. Probably a little bit hard to hear me down here along the side of the trencher now. You can actually see the trencher is in this area though, and that's actually cutting down through the earthen embankment right here. And again, you can see the two hoppers up here on the left uh, metering in that cement and that bentonite. Operators over here keeping an eye on everything, making sure everything is running smoothly. And this pole right here on the side is metering the elevation. So they have fine adjustments that they can move the trencher up and down based on the elevation uh, to make sure that they're getting all the way down to that glacial till and forming a solid and permeable wall. Definitely a pretty neat operation. Let's head on over here to the left to go down to the dam, check out that area real quick, kind of show you the finished product. Down here a little bit further to the east, so Edenville Dam is right down there. That's where they ended up starting. You can see their water source that they're pumping from the Titabwasi River down here. And when they round the bend behind me, they're actually going to swap over to pumping out of the Tobacco River, fusing those two together uh, so that they have one continuous line. Can't really tell a difference here in the SCB wall though. Once that slurry is kind of up on top here, it all looks relatively the same. And some of you might be wondering, how are they going to conjoin this cutoff wall up with the dam so that there's no water that's able to penetrate up there by the dam? And the answer is a sheet pile. But how do you conjoin sheet pile up with a solid cutoff wall? And actually what they ended up doing down there by the dam is they just started with bentonite. Kind of how they do at the end of the day, just put a bentonite mixture down there and then started the cement soil bentonite mixture that is a little bit more solid and hard. Now they can go back afterwards and drive in that steel sheet pile into that bentonite layer and meet up with the SCB cutoff wall to form one impenetrable, impermeable cutoff wall. So pretty interesting. Take a look out here 
on the lake bed. Looks like there's been quite a bit of brush hogging going. Some of these trees are getting fairly large. We have very interesting, my live camera is right over here. So we got a nice view of it from this direction. And then we have an awesome view as the trencher is rounding the bend from the Tobacco River Camp. So make sure you're checking out the live cameras to keep an eye on the trencher. After they finish over here on the Edenville side, they'll be jumping over M30 and they have a little bit more cutoff wall to install on the Tobacco River Dam side. I'm gonna go ahead, head back to the truck now, throw the drone up in the air, and get you guys some of that aerial video that you enjoy. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. A ton more videos that I will be coming out with. A lot of work happening up there at Seacord and Smallwood and even here on the Edenville and Tobacco River Dam. Sanford, soon to come as well. So make sure you guys are subscribed to catch all those future videos. Here's a great shot of the Edenville Dam. Oh, of course, over there on the left-hand side where that sheet pile is uh, at, that still needs to have a lot of fill brought back in to restore that level. Um, that's actually where the earthen embankment ended up failing originally when the disaster ended up happening here, and that sent all the water from Wixom Lake flooding down the Titabawassee River. It then joined back up with Sanford Lake. It then overtopped the Sanford earthen embankment, also causing that earthen embankment to fail. So again, there is a lot of fill that needs to be brought back in in that area where the earthen embankment has been washed out. That will be coming in the next few years. And there's been a ton of progress up there at Seacord and Smallwood Dam again. So make sure you're letting me know if you're interested in seeing some of that work that's going on there. You gotta get out there soon again but as I've alluded to in previous videos, it has been a super busy time. Our baby girl, our daughter was born just over a month ago now, so I've been spending a lot of quality time at home with her. So that's why the videos have been a little bit slower and a little bit de delayed, just because I've kind of been doing that. Here you can see the laydown yard. Um, some of that uh, trencher components were over on the left-hand side. It's actually uh, going on the boom that's attached to the trencher going down and digging into the earthen embankment and here we can see they have a lift over here um, and they're actually I think this is the uh, it's either bentonite or the cement that they're putting in this hopper and this is kind of how you can see that they load the cement and the bentonite into the semis so we'll see a little bit of this process I think there's an auger in the bottom of this that then just augers it up to the top of the semi. And again, the cement and the bentonite are both just powders, so they flow pretty freely either by uh, pneumatically uh, air-driven systems, which is what they use in the semis to get it up to the trencher, or in this case, um, I think they're using an auger system to load it into the semis. Again, you can see there is a lot of these bags staged here uh, here in the staging yard, the D-Wind crew is a pretty small crew, and I think I've already said previously that this trencher is homemade. They actually have two of these trenchers. Uh, they used a second one over there on the Tobacco River side, and they ended up going really deep over there. I think around 100 feet, if I recall, and that's just because that bedrock, uh, that hard pan, was at such a deeper elevation. Um, to actually get that cutoff wall down to that level, they needed a little bit bigger trencher. So again, these, this operation is uh, all maintained by the crew here on site by DeWind as well. It's kind of cool seeing that you know they built these systems. They're the ones working on them. They are the experts here in this field. And again, here's where there's that trencher. Kind of see, I don't know what it's exactly called, kind of the boom that the teeth would be spinning around inside of the earthen embankment. We'll now fly over to the Tobacco River side and you can see that they were starting some of the work over here, stripping off the top of the earthen embankment, preparing for that larger trencher to come over here and start trenching on this side. And they actually are trenching through M30 right now. M30 is actually closed down right there by that temporary bridge for them to trench right through the roadway so that there is one solid impermeable wall. So that shutdown will be for 
about two weeks. It probably won't take them two weeks, but they're just kind of, um, you know, planning for a little bit longer than expected if they do run into issues. And if you check out the Tobacco River Dam live camera today, I probably will post this video today. So check out that live camera and you'll see the trench out there right by M30 trenching through the roadway by the temporary bridge. So pretty cool uh, being able to see that. Um, this shot is now facing back towards the east over on the Tobacco River Dam side. And they're armoring the earthen embankment with uh, just a lot of riprap. Again, we'll probably include a little bit of this raw video at the end of the video, just the excavator going ahead, scooping out the riprap out of the back of the off-road dump truck, the rock truck, and putting it here on the earthen embankment. Pretty uh, experienced operators, as you can see, turning the bucket around backwards to be able to put all that riprap exactly where they want it to. And just a couple more details that you guys might be curious about with the trencher as to how fast they were moving when they were trenching over on the Edenville side when I was there, they were doing about six inches per minute. So again, relatively slow process, but the deeper you go, the slower you have to go and the shallower you are trenching, you can maybe move a little bit faster. And um, yeah, there was actually the day before I was out there, the water pump went out on the trencher. So again, small crew, they maintained their equipment. They were able to get a new water pump get it installed on that trencher, which is again an excavator platform. So I'm sure a lot of people that are familiar with excavators probably could have replaced that water pump. But again, this crew maintains, constructed uh, all of this very specialized equipment for this specialized type of job. And again, nice shot of the Tobacco River Dam, water flowing through there. And work is just about ready to start down there on the Sanford Dam as well. I saw some stuff being staged there. So we'll have to keep an eye on that live camera. Again, live cameras are up there on Secord and Smallwood Dam. So make sure you're tuning into all the live cameras if you're curious as to what's going on day to day um, when I'm not out there filming. Uh, I'll say I'll try to get out there at least every other month to film an update as progress is happening very fast at this time. Um, restoration seems like it's going pretty well here and over here on the left hand side you'll actually see M30 and this is where that trencher is staged right now on the Tobacco River live camera trenching right through the roadway on M30 on the south side of this temporary bridge so pretty cool being able to see that in real time from the live cameras even though I'm not out there filming Again, I don't think that this process will take much longer. They've did a lot of trenching over on the Tobacco River Dam side already, and it seems like things are almost wrapped up. Up here at 400 feet in altitude, though, you get a good view over what used to be Wixom Lake and Edenville Dam way back in the background at the top of the screen. Thanks for watching, and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting, and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.